Good morning, church. It's Friday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go to John, uh, Genesis chapter number three. And we're going to be talking about, again, the temptation of Eve and Adam as Satan comes to them and and uh, convinces them to eat of the fruit that God has forbidden. Contrary to comp- contemporary uh, philosophy, you and I are not good, but we are evil. Uh, we are born with a nature inclined to sin and we make choices to sin. But Adam and Eve were not created that way. They were created innocent. And it took someone to come to them and say to them, here's an option. And that's what God allows Satan to do, is give an option. We've already looked at the verses, but let's look at, look at it again in verse number uh, one. It says at the very end of that, Satan or the serpent says to the woman, has God indeed said? Now there's a good question. Is God saying these things, or was it Adam that said this thing to you? See, Adam actually received the direct command from God. Eve was then created, and Adam passed it on. In fact, when Adam passed it on, he went beyond what God said. For you see in verse number three that she says, well, God says that we shall not eat of it, nor shall we even touch it. So, Adam passed it on to Eve. And so here is the deception. Did God really say that? Or is that just Adam's interpretation? Are you sure God said that? Because, you see, the 66 books that we have were all given through men. How do we know those men actually said those things? That, that, that uh, God actually said those things to men? How do we know that's not just men's opinion? So we have to be very careful when we come to the Bible, they would say. You have to see what part of this is actually inspired by God and what part are actually the opinions of men. And usually it's always those things that disagree with their own desires. They say, well, that's only Paul's opinion. Women can be pastors. Men are not to be the head of the home. It's to be an equal partnership. There's not one who leads and one who has to submit. That's just Paul's opinion. That's the culture of their day. That's not necessarily God's word. And so we see that has been a problem all the way down through history. And so Satan comes and Satan tries to convince Eve that it's okay for you to do this. And so in verse 2, she answers and says, We may eat the fruit of all the trees in the garden, verse 3, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent, Satan, through this serpent, said, you will not surely die. Now, he originally cast doubt upon the word of God. Did God really say that? She said, oh yeah, God said this. Now he denies God's word. Uh, You're not going to die. You're not going to die. And then he gives an different interpretation of the circumstances. He says this, For God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. Now, there's nothing wrong with Adam and Eve wanting to be God-like. We all, as Christians, ought to try to be godly or God-like. We ought to strive to live in such a way that pleases God. But what Satan is here offering to her is Godhood. Not to be Godlike, but you can be like God or godly. But here's what you go beyond that and say, and that is you can be God, knowing good from evil. You don't need God to tell you what's right or what's wrong. You can determine what's right. And if you want to eat the fruit, then that's right. Go ahead and eat it. And if you don't want to eat the fruit, that's okay too. But it's your decision to make. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree, desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and she ate, and she also gave to her husband and he ate. And thus sin entered into the world. The Bible says, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy 
the works of the devil. So you tell me, by eating the fruit, were they more godlike or were they more devil like? The devil, obviously. He who sins is of the devil. So he's offering Satan, is offering to Eve and to Adam godhood. Follow me, do things the way I tell you to do them, and you will become gods. You will be like God. God already created them in his image, so they're already like God. But you will be able to determine your direction for yourself. That is good. And of course, she bit, literally bit. She ate of the fruit. And then Adam also ate. And in so doing, brought the downfall of humanity. Culture is always going to be in a downward direction when it doesn't obey the Word of God. But when the Word of God is obeyed, then the culture, the church, the family, the individual will always be blessed because they are heeding the voice of God. It's always demonic. It's always the doctrine of a demon. It's always devilish. It's always a deceptive spirit like Satan was in this situation that t tells us, don't worry about the word of God. You don't have to worry about God's word. Just follow your heart. Think it through yourself. Follow your own uh, mind. You're, you can figure this out for yourself. And that is where mankind got himself into trouble. Folks, we are not to use reason. We are to always obey revelation. We are not to follow our hearts because they are deceptive and deceitful above all else. We don't even understand our hearts sometimes, how deceptive and, de and devilish we are. But we are to follow His Word. And when we get a away from that, you can always expect what we're going to see in chapter number 3 and beyond. In fact, it's amazing that God starts here, and in, in the third chapter of the book of Genesis, we are introduced to Satan. And now for 66 books, for the remainder of the Bible, he shows us that God was right, sin entered into the world, and all the destructiveness that sin brought. And we see Satan working throughout all the pages of Scripture until you get to the end of the Bible, and then we'll see Satan's destruction. We'll see sin cast out, and sin will be no more. But God has redeemed it all, and he redeemed it all through the blood of his son. We're going to get into that. But the problem is sin. The, the things that we see around us are just a symptom of the problem. All these sins that we see and the violence and all these things, that's the symptoms of sin. But we're going to see that the solution is God. That God has sent his son into the world, that through Jesus we might have everlasting life. Now, come back tomorrow and we're going to talk about how, he, how Satan approached the word of God and, and to cause people to sin. And we're going to see it's the same approach of liberals today. Let's pray together. Father, again, we thank you that you've given us the victory, which is in Christ our Lord. We thank you that he has overcome sin through uh, living out a perfect life and that he has destroyed sin on the cross through his death and through his resurrection, that we might be made righteousness in him. Thank you. In his holy name we pray. Amen.